Hello and welcome to my latest video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to paint this uh, Lehman Rust Vanquisher for the Solar Auxilia from the uh, Legion Superioris game, so that, that's why it's so small. Um, throughout the video you're going to see a couple of other tanks pop up as well and that's because I'm basically batch painting them. So the, the techniques I'm going to show you for how to paint this are very quick and simple but uh, it does require an airbrush and the main reason for that is it allows me to paint up quite a few of these in one go because I'm actually painting these up uh, to game with and really using an airbrush makes it so much quicker. Uh, I probably will do another guide, maybe a PDF or something like that uh, on how to paint them without the use of an airbrush but uh, for the case of this video and just because I need to get these done uh, really quickly um, you know an airbrush is really the way to go. Uh, so to start with uh, you can see I was using uh, Vallejo uh, neutral grey mixed with some airbrush thinner so it's around about 30 uh, psi and I, I mix it around about 50-50 with thinner. You can add a bit of water to the thinner as well if you want but um, it's such a small amount of paint that I use to do this. Uh, I, you know, the, the thinner, it's a very negligible cost, uh, but if you want to spread it out a bit more, you can, uh, like I say, add a bit of water to it. And then all I'm doing is just covering the, the whole tank in neutral gray. Uh, so uh, a quicker way to do this would be to just start with a gray primer if you wanted. And by quicker, I mean better. Uh, the only reason that I used a black primer in this was because uh, I didn't have any gray primer spare. Um, what you will find as well when you apply the paint is it looks quite light while it's wet and then it dries a lot darker so it can be a little bit misleading while you're you know, spraying these especially when it gets to the light color as well so all the grays uh, this happens to they, they look very kind of bright and you know poppy when you first uh, apply the paint uh, and then as it dries you're like actually that looks really dull and boring so make sure when you're doing the layers don't just stop at one layer you will need uh, two or three layers just to really get a very nice opaque finish because what happens is um, as the uh, the paint dries uh, you get a sort of a translucent effect with the, the layers of paint and the the lower layers of paint will show through so the neutral gray will show through on the um, the pale gray blue there uh, while I'm apl uh, applying this, uh, it looks a little bit speckled, don't worry about that while it dries and when, after I finish with all the process you just won't see that at all, it's uh, not that big of an issue. Um, but it can be uh, tricky just in general just to use uh, lighter colour paints with lots of white paint in. Um, because you know, obviously pale grey blue has uh, an element of white in the paint. Um, but when you're applying this, it's basically modulation that I'm using. So um, you have to um, paint from the bottom up at the side so it's light at the bottom and then a little bit darker at the top don't leave it too dark like you almost kind of want to give the whole tank a bit of a dusting with this um, because we will be taking it up to white um, but you still want to see a little bit of the neutral gray just in you know, certain areas so there's it gives a bit of definition uh, to the tank rather than having it just all uh, really pale all over yeah, so you can see uh, the top flat section that's given a, a very a strong coat and then as I tilt it around to the side just a very quick dusting again at the side just to show that it's a lighter color um, so depending on what angle you actually look at the tank from um, it will look a, either a little bit lighter or a little bit darker so when you're looking top down it, it looks a lot lighter overall in general but when you look at it from the side you can see the, you know, the, the darker panels showing through So here we are at the moment. You probably can see as well that the uh, barrel on the tank is uh, black still at the end. That just that's just because that's where I was holding it, but it is quite handy for later on because I'm just going to leave the the barrels black anyway, so they have like a blackened effect on the the tips of them. Um, so the final color I'm using is Moro White, so P3 Moro White, uh, and that's the same thing again. So uh, pop it in the airbrush with some like around about 50 uh, 50 uh, paint to thinner. Uh, and then just do the same again as you've just done with the pale grey blue uh, but this time you're um, spraying a little bit less of the surface area than you were before so you still want some of the pale grey blue to sh show through um, but you're focusing like at the basically the bottom of the sides the, the top section at the front um, and again there's probably going to be a little bit of speckling while you're using white paint I mean you can mitigate that to a certain extent with brush control and if you thin the paint a little bit more uh, but it's just not worth it <laughs> for, for, for this anyway. Um, you, you can, uh, you know, make it a, a lot smoother. And also, if you went for something, say, like a uh, Tamiya White, um, so those are, I think, alcohol-based uh, paints, but um, you'll get a, a much th um, 
smoother finish with them. It's just I can't be bothered to uh, to work with the the, the th uh, thinners for them um, by having to clean my airbrush out basically. Um, so what I've done here is I've just put the top back on just to have a, an overall look at the tank just to see if it uh, needs any more um, highlighting because what uh, can happen is so you put some of the white paint on and you think oh, I'll highlight it all um, and by the time you finish with all the weathering and everything it can look a bit dull again so you really want to make sure there's some very bright points on there going up to white um, but still obviously laying, leaving a little bit left of the, the grey um, just so there's a bit of variation in the, the tank and, and a bit of depth to it um, like if you wanted I suppose you could just spray the whole tank white and then see what you end up with um, as a final result after all the weathering as well but it might look a little bit uh, less interesting uh, just because there'd be no variation in the you know the highlights and things like that um, so for a, a bit of interest on the tank as well I'm putting some red uh, markings on so all my tanks are going to be the same then I'm going to differentiate the uh, the leader tanks with uh, having a red turret um, so you saw that was Evil Sun's Scarlet that I was using if you're uh, kind of curious why all my paints are in the wrong parts <laughs> is because I uh, ordered some separate ones I can get more paint in them uh, and so and it's just easy to work with with the very simple flip tops um, so those are just you know plastic pots that I've uh, ordered myself uh, so now this is kind of like the the fun and this is where the, the magic happens for, for making it look like a very detailed uh, paint job when in actual fact it's actually a very simple straightforward paint job um, I'm going to be using Rhinox Hide, and in a moment, actually, you're going to see me stippling this on here. Um, but in a moment, you'll see actually uh, more of the process because you'll see the uh, kitchen roll that, that I have off to the side. Um, but all it is, it's so it's a bit of uh, blister foam packaging there that I've just torn off, and then I'm holding it in tweezers. Uh, the thing with the the stippling on this is. Um, one, you want to thin the paint a little bit, so don't just take it straight from the pot. I know a lot of people, they'll just open their pot and then dip the sponge into uh, the pot and start stippling from there. That'll leave the paint too thick. So you need to thin the paint a little bit, um, you know, so it's slightly runny, something like um, single cream kind of thickness, I guess. Uh, they only put a small amount on the brush. So if you see, it's only a, not on the brush, sorry, on the, the sponge. You can you see it's only a small piece of sponge anyway. Um, and then you uh, kind of dab off on the kitchen roll uh, all the excess. It's really important that you do this because if you don't, there's going to be blobs of paint on the sponge that are very thick and sort of lumpy. And uh, on a model this size, when you apply it, it will just cover like a you know a third of the tank in one go. Uh, it can really, really kind of mess up the whole uh, paint job. And actually, having less paint on the sponge than maybe than you might even need, but it it can make a really interesting look because it leaves very very tiny marks so you can see and they fit the scale much better the, the more paint that you have on the bigger the mark that it will leave but also you have to vary the uh, the pressure that you apply when sponging this you don't want to just be smashing the sponge on there uh, you know giving really dark heavy marks it's very gentle taps with tiny amounts of paint then you can go back and you focus on where you want the weathering to be. So in this case, I'm looking at the, the bottom near, uh, near where the floor would be. Because obviously, um, as the tank's driving along, that's where the most damage will occur from like, hitting Im like, impacts and uh, rubbing against the environment as it drives along. Um, and also the front as well. So, um, you know, try and pay attention to where the, uh, the natural weathering would occur on something like this. Um, for the weathering that I'm putting on this, I'm going very heavily weathered. <laughs> so it's um, it, it, they can maybe obscure the detail a bit. In fact, with uh, how much uh, chipping I put on, so it's kind of extreme, and it might be a case of you don't actually want to go this heavy with uh, the weathering that you you do. Um, but you can still use the same method. Uh, so you can still you know use a sponge, but but you know take most of the paint off and just do some very delicate sponging here and there because it really adds to the scale of the pieces um, with these tiny tiny marks that appear all over and the natural um, marks that the sponge makes will focus more on the edges of things uh, which is really handy because that's how it works naturally anyway uh, in real life because edges you know they they just take more damage because of the, the friction because it's a uh, you know on a very small area um, you can see here, I'm just going back, because it's on the Bane Blade, oh, sorry, the, um, oh, whichever tank it is, <laughs> the one with the different um, cannon on anyway. Um, you can see I'm, I've just gone back with the 
at the Rhinox hide now and I'm just painting in some like extra little lines and just picking out a few details here and there because it is a larger tank so you can spend a bit more time on it um, but once you've got all the tanks done that you're uh, going to be working on uh, it's time to start working with the oils now I know people can be a little bit scared of, the, uh, of all the oils but you can see that um, I'm only using two colors there so it's black and burnt sienna so in the bottom paint there on the right uh, those are mixed together around about 50 50 and then above that I've just got burnt sienna on its own and so there's no preparation needed on the tank and I've just mixed those in on, on a spare plastic sheet there like a bit of plastic card actually um, but there's no special preparation or anything you don't have to uh, put any gloss or varnish or anything like that on the model so this is exactly where the model was left after I've just done the Rhinox hide however I have missed a step at this stage that you need to do if you want to put any decals on the, the tank um, so make sure you put those on first and all I did uh, when I apply my decals is or decals sorry is um, micro set just I mean they're tiny they're absolutely tiny these these decals when you apply them so you, you know it's really not worth going through too much effort about you know putting like a gloss varnish down and then putting the the decal down and then um, do it using microsol or, or any of that st stuff just pop the, the decal on pop a bit of micro set over it and then leave it for a half an hour or so and it'll be fine like that but it's a good idea to do those before you get to the the oil wash because if you put the oil over the top of it um, it'll help it sort of blend in with the weathering on the tank whereas but otherwise especially if you're using any of the white uh, ones on top of say like the red uh, panels um, they can look a little bit too clean in comparison to the rest of the tank so uh, also when you saw me applying the oils um, you might notice that I wasn't covering the whole tank I was just putting it in the recesses and letting the capillary action of the the paint sort of flow around so it, that leaves areas of um, white on the tank so it's a bit cleaner and brighter and it saves you having to clean it up later as well um, also, in case you were wondering why I'd got some of the burnt sienna separate on the, the palette, uh, so if you see like on the, the turret there, anywhere where I'd put lots of chipping, I used a little bit of burnt sienna uh, because it gives a sort of a, an implication of a bit of rust uh, coming from the, the heavy chipping in those areas. Uh, so after that, um, you can go and put the, the metal on the, the tank. Um, so I'm using, um, oh, what was it? <laughs> Exhaust Manifold by Vallejo Metal Color. Um, and again, I put those into one of the uh, the paint pots that I bought separately, especially because the the paint pots for uh, these particular paints they make the paint just sort of like spatter everywhere when you close the lids. So um, I, I just prefer having the the control of the you know the, the different paint pots, and it's I can paint straight from the pot because they're airbrush paints, so they're very sort of runny and fluid, and that just lets me you know take the paint straight out of the pot without having to put it into any um, kind of a paint palette or anything. And then once that's all dry, and I really recommend that you paint a few of the tanks in one go again when you're doing this, because if you try and put the uh, the wash on top of the metallics before it's set, it, the metallics will lift off and you'll have like a metallic wash sort of floating all over the tank. <laughs> so, you know, really make sure that the, uh, the metallics are dry. But then it's just uh, Agrax Earthshade covering all of the metallic parts. Um, I always find painting the metallic sections on the tanks a, a bit boring, but I try and keep the process as quick as possible. So, you know, just picking them out very, very quickly and then giving them the wash. It all sort of blends in. And uh, I mean, you can see actually on the uh, the decal there, I need to give it a little bit of a matte varnish on top just to, to hide a slight bit of the shine. But really at this stage, I think it would be fine to just leave the tanks like that and just game with them. I think they look quite cool like that. Um, the, the next stages that you're going to see is just kind of like extra detail that I'm going to be putting on. Uh, so here I'm using uh, copper again, a Vallejo metal colour. Um, and just picking out a few extra details here and there uh, just for, for added detail really. So this is just again pushing the um, the complexity of the paint job and it's entirely up to you if you want to do something like that. I mean you can definitely take these a lot further than I do in the video. So if you like, look, he's got like all sorts of cables and different uh, bits and bobs on the tank that you could pick out. You could put like, paint like hazard stripes on the cables, all sorts of things uh, that could really um, elevate the tank, the paint job to a to a high level. But in the case of these, because I just want to get them done quickly, and they're going to be like wiped off the table during gaming very quickly anyway. Um, it, for for me, it's just really not that worth it. But at the same time, I do enjoy you know painting the details and things. So um, you just have to to determine uh, the level of detail that you actually want to paint on these models. So after 
I've finished painting all the, the copper elements on, uh, I just give them a coat of uh, Skeleton Horde contrast paint. Uh, so this does kind of two things. One, the copper colour that I used, it's a little bit too pale. Uh, so if you look when you apply Skeleton Horde, it makes it a much richer colour. And also it provides an element of shading and uh, highlighting to it. Um, so you know, just makes it look a bit better and not such a flat colour. Uh, you can see there I also put uh, a little bit of Skeleton Horde on the exhaust at the back of the tank, uh, even though that was painted with the exhaust manifold, uh, just to make it look a, a little bit yellowy as well, so it's kind of like burnt. Uh, so now this is where we're getting into like really sort of fiddly details, and if you struggle with very fine details, one, I would recommend using a headset. So you can see now I've actually put my headset on, and I'm going to be using this for painting the lenses on the tank. Now the lenses on these are very very small and they're not kind of they're not quite as well defined as say the the lenses on a Space Marines helmet um, and even those are quite small to paint but uh, they're not quite as bad as these so the one that um, that's on the, the right like the big one I think it might be a lamp actually but I'm painting it as a uh, uh, like a just a shiny blob <laughs> that's not too bad but the one that's right next to the hatch at the top the little square one is very very small and tricky to paint so uh, don't worry if you struggle a little bit on painting that in um i, I think you know most people aren't going to really notice if you painted in the, the lenses or not on the tanks uh, then just to quickly move on um while i also painted the uh, the two lenses there uh, black uh, i'm painting the last cannon on the uh, front of the hull there and giving it a quick highlight uh, so all I've done is obviously it was painted black to start with then I just added white to these black mixes uh, I mean you can use different you could use like neutral grey if you wanted um, especially because you probably got some of that spare after giving the tank a coat of neutral grey to start with but I find you have a little bit more control over exactly how much lighter the highlights are uh, just by mixing some white into the black that you're using yeah, and all it is is just three stages of highlight so you've got the black then you add uh, a dark grey like a big block of dark grey then you add some white to that then it's a thinner line of grey and then you can take it up to a final uh, highlight just at the very tip of the last cannon uh, just to you know push the contrast Right, so you, you might be looking at the, the work palette there and thinking, well, there's a lot of colours mixed up. Um, do I need to do all that for painting the lenses? No. Um, I was painting something else. Uh, I think it was like a striking scorpion or something like that. And I needed a lot of variations in the colour for the green um, because it's obviously a much larger model than this. Um, so you only need a, uh, a couple of colours for this. Uh, and I mixed these colours. So these were... The base green colour was 50-50, Sotec green and Moot green. But you could use something like Warboss green, uh, Warpstone green, something like that anyway. like Just a, a nice sort of green colour uh, pick that. It won't make a huge difference. These are very small areas, like I said. Uh, but you, I paint them slightly differently to uh, large gems, just so that you can see the colour a little bit more clearly on them. So I cover the whole lens in green. Normally you would leave a, sort of like a small black section on it, but if you start leaving small black sections on these, uh, there's a lot less space to, to get any colour on there. And it can be quite hard to actually see much colour on the model as it is on these little small areas. Uh, so once I've got the, the green on there, I go and I basically add a bit of white to it. And then you kind of you paint a, an edge going all the way around. And then you add a bit more white and you pick out the bottom right edge with a thin line and then you put a dot in the top left and finally if you want to push it even further just go for pure white then make an even smaller line on top of the line you've already painted on the bottom right and then you can go over the the dot in the top left again and i mean it is that's really pushing the the amount of f you know work that you could put into these and i would completely understand if you didn't want to do that you could just make it a lot quicker and just do one stage highlight maybe just paint a circle around uh, the green or something just so it's got a bit of definition and shape to it um, and you know maybe a white dot in the top left it will still work pretty much the same way but you just get more of like that shine effect by having the uh, the highlights in the bottom left um, for the uh, sort of little square here the square lens this is a bit harder uh, but it does benefit from having a, a light line going all the way around just because it's so small um, it's quite hard to just see the the definition on it 
uh, it sort of blends into the model and like I say most people wouldn't even notice if you didn't paint this because it's so small and I think there's a few more lenses and things on the model as well that you can actually pick out and paint if you wanted but you won't see them like for gaming you just wouldn't see them I've only picked these, these two because they're the, sort of the largest ones on there um, and you can just about make them out uh, also don't be kind of forced into the colors that I've used here um, you can see here with the red turret it works much better because obviously green is a contrast against the red um, but for the uh, the white tanks you know pretty much any color will do uh, it doesn't matter too much so here you can see some of the other tanks that I've been working on uh, there was uh, the Malkador again and you can see that I'd already put some weathering powder now I'm in two minds about whether it's worth adding the weathering powder to it or not you just need some sort of, uh, red kind of like dust for it or indeed you can use any color you want depending on what base or what gaming mat that you use for for your tanks uh, so for this it was uh, a forge world weathering powder and I don't think forge world make or you know sell the weathering powders anymore but it really doesn't matter weathering powder it's just you know it's just colored dust you can go and find some chalk if you want and grind it up and it'll do the same thing it's just like colored powder uh, so whatever powder you want all you have to do is just sort of brush it onto the model make sure you really scrub it in there don't just sort of sprinkle it on um, get the brush really really scrub it in focus on the areas where you want it to be so in the case of this and that makes the most sense is the, the very bottom area of the, the tracks, uh, really the tracks all the way around, but the, the bottom area at the side of the tank. Now, from there, you need to fix it. For this case, I used the airbrush and I just sprayed some Agrax Earth Shade uh, along the, the bottom edges. Um, and that has the same sort of effect. But if you want, you could just use like a matte varnish, that'll fix it as well. Um, I know people like to use alcohol uh, to paint it on, but the depending on which fixative you use it can really wipe off the sort of the dirty effect and it turns into more like a wash so I prefer just to use either matte varnish or indeed a um, the Games Workshop wash because it like just a very delicate uh, coat of it as well but it, it fixes it enough that it doesn't rub off when you touch it with your fingers uh, so here are the, the finished tanks now uh, you can see this one here with the uh, the red turret and uh, there's some Alcador as well. Uh, I think they all look pretty cool. They're, I mean, as I said, they're very, very heavily weathered, uh, but that sort of level of weathering, especially on the, the light colored tanks, I think it works very well. And like it, it stands out, so they're quite high contrast and it will stand out on the tabletop uh, for the short amount of period, you know, time that they're on there before they get blown up. And here's like the a couple of uh, photos. So I've got this one. This was the main one that you saw me working on the video. And then in a moment there will be the uh, the red turret tank as well. Uh, but but that's pretty much it. So you know very straightforward. You can use all these techniques uh, on different colors. So don't feel constrained on the uh, the colors that I've used. Um, I do think these are particularly um, kind of useful colors for uh, for this scale. So what you will find is that lighter colors with the heavy weathering um, will stand out more because it's so small. So the high contrast will really make it pop out. Um, whereas if you were painting like a like black colored tanks, really dark colored tanks, uh, it's going to be a bit trickier because they, you know you don't get the high contrast on there. They just look, they'll look like dark blobs on there. Uh, but you can you can always put um, lighter colored markings on there, um, and it will still make elements of them stand out and of course you still have the uh, lenses as well that you can use uh, just to add a you know a couple of areas to uh, to pop out as well um, but that's pretty much it and that's uh, the end of the video so um, I hope you enjoyed what you what you watched um, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time